Hi everyone. In this lesson I want to talk about how we solve absolute value equations and inequalities algebraically. So here's an absolute value equation, absolute value of x minus 2 equals 4, and you can see I have next to it the corresponding inequalities, either less than 4 or greater than 4. Now when you go to solve any absolute value equation or inequality, there's always two parts. Okay, You want to be certain that, that uh, you're using two parts to solve it or you will certainly get it wrong. So the first part of solving any absolute value equation or inequality uh, that you can do is to just pretend the absolute value doesn't exist. Just drop the absolute values and the first part would just like in this case be that, that uh, x minus 2 equals 4. Or over in this case, if I'm solving the absolute value of x minus 2 is less than 4, just drop the absolute value and say x minus 2 is less than 4. Or in the third case, if it was you know greater than 4, just drop the absolute value and you have x minus 2 is greater than 4. Now that's only uh, half of the uh, problem, and if you only do half, you, as I mentioned before, you'll definitely get it wrong. There's another half. The other half is that if your original, if you look at what you did before, if it's x minus 2 less than 4, all you do is you just look at this last part of that and you just reverse the inequality, make the greater than a less than, and put a minus 4, change the sign of what's right there. Um, if it's uh, x minus 2 less than 4, you're going to reverse the inequality and write x minus 2 greater than, and again, you have to change the sign of negative 4. If it was equals 4, you're going to reverse that equals 4, and if you reverse an equals, you still get an equals, and you're going to put a negative 4. Now, the only thing that you have to remember in addition to that is if it's a less than, you have to put the word and between it, and if it's a greater than, your original problem is greater than, you have to put the word or between it. Uh, the or is what makes it a, uh, a union, uh, a disjunction, and the and is what makes it a, a conjunction or a, uh, a compound inequality. So um, notice here, if I just solve each of these separately now, I got x minus 2 equals 4, that's going to give me x equals 6, or this is going to give me x equals negative 2. And you'll notice that negative 2 uh, and 6 are both solutions to the original equation. If I plug in 6 or negative 2, it's going to make it true. If I solve this one, I'm going to get uh, x is less than 6, and at the same time, x is going to be greater than negative 2. Now, because of the word and here, I can put this together as a compound inequality. I've got on the one hand x is greater than negative 2, that, and, then, and then I've got the x is less than 6. Okay, notice that the values between negative 2 and 6 are what are going to make this true. You can uh, plug those in. If I solve this one, I'll get x is greater than 6, or x is less than negative 2. And notice on this one right here, if I think of this one in terms of the number line, I have to be a little bit careful here, this is saying that x is greater than 6, or x is less than negative 2. Negative 2 is to the left of 6. Now if I didn't have the word or between them, suppose I had the word and between them, I'd be looking for the intersection of those two and they don't intersect. So it is very important that I have the word or between those. Likewise, if I had the word word uh, or between these two, if, if, uh, if it was x less than 6 uh, or x greater than negative 2, I'd actually end up having the whole real line. So this word and or or is very important there. This ends up giving me the, the interval from minus infinity to minus 2 union from 6 to infinity. And that would be my answer on this one. Okay, so let's do this same process uh, for this other example. I'd like to solve both algebraically and graphically the absolute value of x plus 2 equals 3, absolute value of x plus 2 less than 3, and the absolute value of x plus 2 greater than 3. So again, there's always going to be two parts. In this case, I'd have x plus 2 is equal to 3, or x plus 2 is equal to a negative 3. So here we're going to get x is equal to 1, or x is equal to a negative 5. So my solution here is either one of these two values, and you can plug those in up here and see it's going to make it true.
If I solve the less than inequality, again I have two parts, I'm going to have x plus 2 is less than 3 as if the absolute value didn't exist. And then because it's a less than, I need to put the word and between it. x plus 2 is greater than, I reverse the inequality and put a minus there. Now because the word and, again this is the same as a compound inequality, I can put that together as x plus 2 is less than 3 and the x plus 2 is greater than a negative 3 and then you could solve that by simply uh, subtracting 2 from all the parts to get the get the x all by itself in the middle so you get x is going to be less than 1 here and it's going to be greater than negative 5 here and that gives me this this whole interval from minus 5 to 1 Okay, if I have the absolute value is greater than 3, again there's two parts. On the one hand the x plus 2 is going to be greater than 3 and because it's greater than I have to put the word or between it. And then x plus 2 is less than a negative 3. So I reverse the inequality and change the sign. And so I'll get x is greater than 1 or over here x is less than negative 5. So again, if you think of that in terms of the number line, I want the x's to the right of 1 or to the left of negative 5. Okay, so in interval notation, this would be the interval from minus, minus infinity to minus 5 union from 1 to infinity. Okay. One last thing to notice here in this problem is that if you tried to make a compound inequality out of these two parts where there's an or between them and not the and, notice that you would get x plus 2 is less than negative 3 and if you put the greater than 3 over here, right, you're saying then that 3 is less than a negative 3, right, and that's not correct. And so you can't put those two pieces together, uh, the, the disjunction, the or, like you can the and there, okay? Now it also asks us to solve this graphically, so I want to I think of it um, in a graphical sense. Think about what two points uh, these problems are finding the distance between. We'd mentioned earlier that the absolute value uh, has to do with distance and, and, and to find distance you have to subtract but this is an addition problem but if I think of the x plus 2 as x minus a negative 2 um, the two points I'm finding the distance between are x and negative 2 so if I look on the number line here at negative 2 and in terms of all these problems I just did I wanted to like in this first one know hey what what's the x values whose distance from in this case negative 2 is three units away. Uh, well if I go three units over here to the left that's going to put me at negative five and if I go three units over here to the right that's going to put me at one. Right and so you can see that negative five and one are the x's that make the first one true and if I wanted to know the x's whose distance from negative two again thinking of x plus two is x minus a negative two Finding the x's whose distance is less than 3 units away, well that's going to be the interval between minus 5 and 1. And if I wanted to know the x's whose distance from negative 2 is more than 3, then it's going to be this interval uh, that's 3 units away from, more than 3 units away on the left. Notice right here in the center, right here, was the negative 2. Okay? And then one last way to think of it graphically is in terms of the Cartesian plane. If I were to graph y equals the absolute value of x plus 2, that's actually a v-shaped graph. You can graph it on your calculator or just plug in some points. But it ends up looking like this. And I'll get a few points and then connect them using my handy dandy line maker here. Okay, so that's y equals x, uh, the absolute value of x plus 2. And then if I wanted to look also at y equals 3, that's of course just a horizontal line. So let me graph that one as well in red. Okay, 
so if I think of, of this in terms of, of two variables on the Cartesian plane, if I wanted to know where is the uh, absolute value, the blue V-shaped graph, where does it equal the red 3? Well, it's going to equal it right here, isn't it? And you see that's at the point negative 5, and also over here at the point x equals 1. If I want to know where is the absolute value, the blue graph, below the red 3, well, it's below right here, isn't it? And that corresponds to this interval between negative 5 and 1. And then if I wanted to know where is the absolute value greater than 3, where is the blue graph above the red graph, that's, that's these guys, isn't it? And that's going to correspond to these values, the split interval, either smaller than negative 5, or greater than 1.